Okay, here we go. We are we are live. Can you hear me, Jason? Yes. How are you doing? Fantastic. Good to meet you. I don't know. Let me see if you're. Uh, yeah, you stopped my video. Got a. <clears throat> huh. That's weird. I'll just do it this way. I stopped the video? Yeah, it says you cannot start your video because the host has stopped it. Mm -hmm. Oh, that wasn't me. I just made you a host. Mm -hmm. I should be able to rectify that. Huh. I didn't do that. That's weird. Let me try something. Okay. Okay. Oh, here we go. Mm -hmm. Oh, it doesn't give me the option. Oh, oh, there, there you are. are. Okay. Ah, I'm alive. <laughs> right I'm on, in. What's up, brother? What's uh, up? Just third show of the day. I'm looking forward to getting uh, to know you in front of everybody. I know, uh, man. Third show of the day. You're rocking and rolling. Yeah. Today's today's a uh, well, it's a typical day, I guess. All right. Yeah. Let me uh, let me pull it up. We'll roll the show out in a couple of minutes. Let me just get all the uh, production stuff done. <clears throat> yeah, I'm looking forward to getting to know you and. Getting to know your wife. I mean, your wife's going to be at the conference too, right? Yeah, yeah. Pretty oh, excited. It's going to be a good time. It was great last year. We had a lot of fun. Yeah, that's what I heard. Y'all had a cruise last time, right? Yeah, it was fun. How many days was it? Two or three days? Not long enough. Not long <laughs> it, was, enough. Yeah, it was a five-day cruise, but it's really like four. But um, Oh, that's yeah. not bad. That's not bad at all. No, uh, seven days not bad. See, I'm going to share this to some of our affiliated groups. Welcome, yeah. everybody. We got 26 people in the house. Good to have you here. Hello, Let me, hello. Let me just share some of this out. <clears throat> okay, getting messages popping on my scoop. I actually just sent that to uh, <laughs> my high school reunion, <laughs> uh, which I don't participate in. Most of them disowned me years ago <laughs> due to my uh, coming out. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. Think we're good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Hello, everybody. 26 people in the house. We've got a special show to end the day with. Uh, another uh, co creator, collaborator with the Conscious Conference in Sarasota, Florida that Morgan and I are honored to be a part of. Uh, January 17th, 18th, and 19th, you can uh, check that out at wavesoflight.org uh, for information. And I know because we get messages every day, people want to help contribute uh, to what we're doing. And we do get, uh, we do get a contribution donation from uh, Waves of Light Conference for anyone that uh, gives Solji as a referral or comes through Solji to to uh, purchase their registration, which I think four people have already done, which is awesome. Thank you for that. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you for the love and support, the contributions to keep us going by the seat of our pants every day. These shows resonate. Please share so we can stay above the algorithms at Facebook. And let me just say, too, I'm going to put in the Zoom link, and I'm going to pin it because we've been having some issues um, with Facebook or Facebook's been having some issues with uh, let's see, let me make sure we're on here. Uh, with the stream, the stream maintaining itself uh, during these shows. So if you start to pop pop off, uh, get knocked off two or three times, one or two times, whatever, uh, you can uh, just go to the Zoom room. I'm going to pin the link to the top and. Uh, Watch it in the Zoom room uninterrupted. So we have a, uh, a special third show of the day. Um, I want to give you a little background on our, our brother here. Uh, 
Soul Speaks 5D welcomes uh, Jason Layton. He is a metaphysicist, author, spiritual coach, hypnotherapist, president of the board of directors of the Masters Octave nonprofit, and the creator of the Soul's Dream online course. His quest for the answers to the age old questions who are we? Where do we come from? started at a very young age. His curiosity led him to study meditation, dreams, astral traveling, and channeling. He's published two books, I Am Understanding Who and What You Are, Volume 1. The book is a compilation of the first year of channelings from 2006. A short time later, his second publication, A Quick Guide to Oneness. This year, 2019, Jay released The Soul's Dream, which is an online course that is designed to awaken you to who you really are and why you're really here. It's his gift to the world, and it's 100% free, true 5D commerce fashion, may I just say. I <laughs> commend you for that, because uh, we can't do what we did in the past. That's what I've been hearing for eight years. Whatever, you've, whatever we've done before, you can't do that. So whatever the problem may be, create your way out of it. So big props to you for offering that online course for free. We'll talk about that, a few other things. Welcome oh, to yeah. the show, Jason. Thank you for uh, sharing space with us and honoring us yeah. with your presence today. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be a part of it. Yeah, we're excited. Uh, looks like you got a nice backdrop there. You must do a little bit of uh, broadcasting yourself, or is this? Uh... I do. I... Nope, it's a green screen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Got a. That's actually the Soul's Dream, my course. Oh, there you go. <laughs> That's my logo for the Soul's Dream. So yeah, every time we go online and I do a broadcast with anybody, I use the uh, the Soul's Dream. Yeah, I saw too that you uh, are in the construction business as well, right? Yeah, yeah. I had a, I had a construction company, but I sold that and. Yeah. Uh, now I'm working more towards metaphysical roots. Absolutely. But I've, been, I've been working on it for about 25 years, and uh, the last two years is now time to make the shift. I mean, yeah. everything, the stars have aligned. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> sure. I, I spent 30, 30 plus years, 30, 35 years in construction. Uh, nice. All, all different levels, yeah, all over the country. Are you, yeah, in Florida? Love- are, you, are you in Florida? No, I'm in New Jersey. New Jersey, okay, yeah. right on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we spent some time in New Jersey. We actually got married in Andover. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, we got married yeah. over there in a beautiful place uh, last summer. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so you're part of. Uh, well, let's let's not go there yet. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But, uh, <laughs> so you you said that uh, from an early age you were on this path. You said right now you've been working on this for 25 years. Did you yeah. have like many light workers, many way shows? Did you have a series of traumas or anything that led to a uh, uh, a reawakening, I guess. Or a- um, I didn't have any trauma. I had a fantastic mother, mm-hmm. and she was she was part of a group where they had channeling. She would go every week, every Wednesday, um, and it was Ted's house. Well, it's actually called the Master's Octave, but it was actually Ted's house. And she would say, "Oh, we're going to Ted's house." There was actually a bar on the corner. I'm like, "You going to the bar?" And she's like, "No, it's Ted's. It's a metaphysical group." So she introduced me to metaphysics, and then um, I met Ted, and this. That's it. It started from there and then just excelled and excelled and excelled. And then I started meditating and got into channeling. And then uh, after four years of, of being part of the group, I became the head channeler of the group. So I was channeling twice a week to 30 people every night. It was it was fantastic to be able to sit there and just open yourself and, and allow that energy to flow through you. So that was fun. And so you you wrote a book. You started channeling in 2006 and you wrote a book uh, shortly thereafter. I mean, did, did you then and do you now channel anything specifically or is it is it pretty much whatever comes uh whatever comes so yeah i, I channeled from like 2005 to 2011 ish and there's like 450 hours in my channeling so i've been documented recorded written out so uh that book i am understanding who and what you are volume one was my first years of channeling and then i was going to do a volume two volume three and volume but I think that the information has grown so fast and it's grown yeah. exponentially that that information is kind of outdated. So I didn't even pursue that. I jumped into the soul's dream. Uh, and then I've been working on that for quite some time now. And I just finished it up this year. So I, I put a lot of time and effort into that. And I'm like, you know what? This information is so valuable that I think everyone should have access to it, no matter what their monetary stance is. So, I, yeah. so I'm like, I think getting the best benefit that I can get out of it is the world awakening, right? It's not about money, really. The money is the old, the old system that's falling away, uh, where we're going to be moving into more like a, a unified consciousness where we're all working together. Yeah. So that's what I'd like we're, to assist with. <laughs> yeah. 
and then and then that leads us to uh, vibrationally uh, what is what is everywhere else but this fishbowl of a realm that we're in at this oh, point yes. anyway, uh, yeah. the universal uh, equal exchange of energy uh, which yeah. is pretty much how we operate which is 100 percent on faith i mean it's uh, we put up a comment after every show uh we're told over and over again uh just yeah. keep, keep putting it out there from the heart from your highest intentions from, from the trajectory of uh alignment with all your aspects and all of all other souls and universal such and it will be reciprocated and it's not always easy uh yes. it's pretty, pretty much a day-to-day -day existence but uh you know, we keep showing up and doing the work, and there's a lot of people to thank for that. Uh, but I can understand where you're coming from, and I really appreciate seeing somebody stepping out of the light worker, way shower, old paradigm box. Because, like you said, uh, the information's moving so fast. I've talked to many people on 1200 plus shows here, just on this show, and they've written a book, and or they were writing a book, and it became obsolete before they could finish it, yeah. <laughs> basically. So, yeah. Yeah. it's amazing how fast the information is coming now i mean and obviously 2012 was the marker point for the information to really shift into this into this new age that we're moving into and uh it's really really exciting i mean i i i've been working at this life for the past six lives to get to where i am today i've been studying and practicing and studying and practicing for this life to get rock and rolling and sharing this information but i couldn't come in until this point in time because we had to make that 2012 shift because yeah. that's where the point of of the old paradigm kind of falling apart when you look into the uh kali yugas or the great year you can see the ascension process stopped and now we are all in the ascension process everybody is in the ascension process uh you know we're just starting into the essential process people are awakening and they're awakening fast opposed you know 300 years ago where we were at in the, in the yeah. dark ages so it's exciting it's so exciting to be here right now in this time yeah everybody's really so excited Everybody's so excited to get to the golden age. Like, oh, I just want to be able to instantaneously manifest. Now, where we're at right now is the best place to be because you still have the old paradigm there, but you have so much light and greatness right in front of us. And we're a lot of a lot of us, even myself, we're still really unconscious to what really is about to occur, which is yeah. which is great. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, it is, and it is moving fast. So some of the questions I ask on the on the show or in the conversation is related to things that might've happened to you in the past because more and more people are awakening uh, at a very fast pace, like you said. And really a lot of the things that they're faced with or going through are the same things you did and other people like you. Uh, oh, yeah. So I try to kind of pull those together to give them a little bit of uh, <laughs> uh, well, something more than hope because I know for many of us in the early years, uh, we were the lone wolf you know, and there wasn't a, yeah. uh, a large community and there was still a lot of distortion and such. But yeah, you know, there's a lot more support now. So we'll reflect on that a little bit. Uh, but yeah, you talk about uh, the present time too. I'm a big believer that we're actually, we've been handed uh, the templates, the blueprints, uh, that type of thing, that we're actually expanding it. And, and the universe is basically seeing uh, how far we're going to take it. You know, that's what yeah. I find exciting it, 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 with everything being kind of drilled down to the spontaneous, the moment, you know, the intuitive, uh, as we say on the show, creative, imaginative and courageous. Because it does take uh, it does take some guts to step out of the box, so to speak. Uh, have you yeah. run into I mean, a lot of the stories uh, on the show or people have run into a lot of resistance. Uh, just, in, you know, uh, you talked about your mom, which is a, which is a great blessing. But estrangement from family, uh, getting, getting uh, displaced from jobs and communities and churches and all that stuff. Uh, did you face much resistance in your past? Um, well, quite frankly, I didn't really start sharing um, publicly until last year. I mean, I, I was part of the Masters Octave, which was a closed group. Yeah. Um, and I really wasn't online doing too much stuff. I was doing everything local. Um, so I really wasn't out in the public side too much. But what I have found coming towards me now is everybody's very open to it. I'm getting a lot of people saying, wow, this is stuff, what you're sharing is incredible. Like, it's so amazing. Like, I had no idea. And that's because uh, I, I kind of have been showing my my ascendant sign, which is my Capricorn sign. So I've been showing that face mask to kind of to the public, but now it's time to show the Sagittarian side, right. which is the seeker. Yeah, that's what I am, I'm a Sagittarius. <laughs> ah, yes, yeah, awesome, awesome. So, uh, yeah, there was a, a, a beautiful lady on yesterday that kind of specializes 
well, in part, uh, on walking. And she mm-hmm. said, yeah, I finally had to, uh, uh, what did she say? I, I had to walk out, you know, about being a walk-in, you know, come out, <laughs> come out of the closet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, that, and, and, it, and there is more support now, you know. There's a lot of people that come on the show, particularly women, who mm-hmm. for years and years and years, you know, 10, 15, 20 years have been doing this work in privacy and solitude without any recognition. And, uh, you know, I think it has something to do with that energetic uh, suppression of the feminine that we've all been, uh, uh, you know, been a victim of, so to speak. I hate to use that word, but, but it's, no, yeah. good, it's uh, yeah. good that you're stepping I- out. I, th- I think it's all part of the program. I mean, we're in a matrix and this matrix has a design and the dissension process and all the stuff that has happened in the past was all done by design and nothing is happening to us. It's all happening for us uh, because who we truly are is an angelic being who is all powerful. We chose to take this journey to completely forget who we are so that we can have this experience of understanding vibration, right? This whole universe is one verse is based on vibration. So it's based on oscillation, which means good, bad, polarity, right? So it's all about the contrast of existence. So we have to forget who we are to be able to have the full on experience. So we all chose this experience. Everything that's happening, once we start understanding that it's not happening to us, it's happening for us and it's happening for our growth. It's, it's, it's incredible. And I, I do a lot of, uh, I moved into uh, hypnotherapy and it's interesting when you start going into the, the subconscious mind, which is I believe is the higher self and you start questioning the subconscious mind of why people have certain things, it's all based on their past that they have put there. It's, 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 it's so amazing. Like when you really look into why people have certain ailments, even physical ailments, mm-hmm. it's all energy blockages, either from emotions, or, well, it's all emotions because a thought then is created to emotion and it's created to an experience. So it's all emotion and blocks. So it's, it's just going in there and changing the emotions and then changing the blocks. But everything that's happened in the past and all this stuff that's happening in our government and all this stuff, it's all happening by design. It's yeah. all right on target. <laughs> yeah, there's no doubt, no doubt. And then, yeah, and you're, that's right. You know, including, uh, I guess, uh, previous incarnation things yeah. moving forward, uh, ancestral stuff. You made the yeah. comment about your preparation in six previous lives for this moment. Now, I remember when I first woke up, uh, I had a flurry of, I believe it was nine, nine different uh, past life experiences came in at one time. And they were in different countries and, and, and different things, but they all had the same type of thing that you're talking about. It was kind of like a, uh, a healer or a, a clergyman, and, and all of them were, uh, you know, related to uh, what I'm doing now. I've never really think about it much anymore. Once I take that information yeah. in, I just let it go and try to stay yeah. present. But, but uh, yeah, that's a that's a good point. And now your your uh, your your uh, online course. It's an online course, right? It is. Uh, yes. Uh, can you talk to us about that? Uh, how did that? How did you come up with it? Uh, can you give us a general? Uh, yeah. Uh, so it's uh, it's seven lessons, and I I like I said, I've been studying for twenty twenty five years now into the metaphysical realms, and then once, like in the last ten years, I kind of step into my understanding of my past six lives and getting to where we're at today. So it opened me up to a lot of information. So what I did is I created this course to start with the basic principles of our reality and then bringing it into a full understanding of the matrix that we're in. And then the energy fields within our bodies that we can use to manifest our reality. Because uh, what we have forgotten as we take in this essential process is what the stars are and how the stars work. And if you look at all our ancient cultures, what do they study? They studied the stars because they understood what the stars were. Most people today, a lot of people today, have I have no idea what the stars are. They look at the stars and they're like, oh, that's Ursia Major. That's just, a, that's just a name for a constellation. But what is it? Like, what is that thing in the sky? If you look at NASA, they'll say, well, that's a, a light that was a thousand, thousand trillion years ago that blew out and we're just seeing the remnants of it, right? And, and then you see the planets and they look exactly like one of those lights, right? So we, we have forgotten what this energy is, but yet we feel it every single day, right? We, we, we feel the seasons changing. And why do the seasons change? They change because of the light of the sun's angle, right? Because the sun comes up in the summer and then down in the winter. And it's through that angle change, it changes our experience in this realm of how we move through our seasons. But the stars are doing the same thing because the stars are vibrational frequency vortexes. They're energy and they're emitting sound and light. Obviously, we see the light, but we don't see the sound. 
Um, but there's plenty of, you can, you can Google sound of the stars and you'll see many videos out there. Yeah. But these vibrational frequencies, we look at a constellation, right? Like I'm a Sagittarius, you're a Sagittarius. The reason why we're Sagittarius is because at the time that we were born, the sun was in front of the constellation and the sun is then amplifying that vibrational frequency as it comes in. And then our chakra systems all align to give us that perspective as, an, as, a, as a Sagittarius. So that's why it gives us all a unique perspective of the same thing, right? We all have a different perception of the same exact thing that we're looking at. And it's all based on these stars and the vibrational frequency of these stars. Like if you look at Sirius, right? I mean, Sirius is an incredible star. I mean, if you look at through a P900 Nikon camera, I mean, I have, I have some really cool pictures. It's, it's incredible. It's a vibrational vortex. You can see it spinning and you can see it pulsating. And the well, pulsation, you can measure the vibrational frequency, right? Because the frequency is your measurement of a vibration. You can measure the frequency of Sirius. But the information that you can get when you sit with it and, 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 uh, and you stare at it and you ask it questions, information comes to you. And I've had some amazing experiences. I was going through some, some, some physical stuff uh, a while back and uh, I was staring at Sirius and through my, through my camera and, I, and when I take a picture of my camera, it automatically goes to my phone. It was three in the morning. So then it went into my bedroom and I was looking at it on my phone. I'm like, wow, it's really interesting. So I'm like, you know what? This is a vibrational frequency. So I started asking questions. What's going on with me? How's this happening? Instantly, I closed my eyes and I started hearing these two younger kids talking. And they, they talked to me for about six hours. It turned into a dream, but it was a, it was a complete awakened dream like it was just a, an, an astral projection and they were showing me everything that was happening why it was happening it was an amazing experience and there were Syrians that were showing me this experience but these each one of these stars are projecting energy and once we understand how to use that energy like the ancients did right so when you look at the temples what are the temples made out of silicon what's our computers make this the computer chip it's silicon we're storing data on our on our cell phones and in our computers using silicon well, they were storing the same kind of data inside of these temples, which were giant resonating machines. And I go in, I go in depth in it with this inside of the soul stream. I break down every little thing on how it works and how we can use this today, each one of us, because wow. we forgot this. Yeah. So, so you cover what are well, in, in just to recap it, you cover what are the stars? What are they actually? What is the sun? You know, and so on. And, and as you explained, uh, and then. So, and, you know, because some people look at it as, uh, you know, I mean, at this point, uh, there are some people looking at me sometimes as well. I realize that there's some type of relationship. Obviously, everything's connected. But I wonder sometimes, you know, in my own sovereignty, in my own dominion, uh, what has any control or power over me? Uh, I know the stars. I mean, it's been written since recorded history, like you said, in these primitive civilizations and onward. Uh, about the effect. I mean, they planted their crops based on the seasons and the stars and this and that. Uh, they navigated. I mean, there's a great story here in Hawaii, down in, a, down in Kapa'a town, uh, on one of the walls where they built these canoes and they actually learned to navigate between these three islands. I think one is uh, south of here. I can't remember where that we're all, where the Crystal Hawaiian Islands and two other ones are pretty far away. And yeah. they actually navigated by way of the stars, uh, which is just mind blowing. You know, so this this information must have been uh, inherent within us, a knowing yeah. uh, in yeah. the early in the early uh, human civilization. It's, it still is though. We're still navigating from the stars. Our time, our time is based on the sun position in the sky, right? Our months are based on the moon cycle, right? Our year is based on the whole passage of the whole entire sun. Our days, our weeks, our calendar, everything that we're using today is based still on the navigation of the stars. We look at our watch now and say, oh, it's 12.03, but not actually understanding that that's a correlation to a specific angle of the sun and the sky. So uh, before, we, before we used you know, time as we know it today, in the 1800s, we had sundials, right? That's how we navigated with, with time. Uh, or, you know, when you were, when, in that time, you could just look at the sun and see what time it was. You know, high noon, we knew uh, when the sun is up at this point, it's high noon. But I mean, we're still navigating with the stars, we're just unconscious. And a lot, of, a lot of what we're doing today is unconscious because we have chosen to forget all this information yeah. so that we can have this amazing experience. Because we, we, who we truly are, we're not physical bodies, right? We have physical bodies. We have a human body. But this isn't who we are. This is just an expression of who we are. Who we are is an eternal being. You can't kill an eternal being. So you can come in and have all these different experiences, female, male, 
good, bad, black, white, anything you can think of. We're here for contrast. We're going to have everything that we can experience inside of this matrix. And it's, 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 it's an amazing, amazing experience that we're all having here. And I know there's a lot of negativity going on, but it's all part of the process. I mean, there's a lot of negativity. That means there's a lot of light beings there that can lift it up. There's always a balance. There's always a balance. Now, you say that uh, uh, you also talk about how to utilize uh, the, the power, uh, the energy of the stars and such. Yep. Uh, and, and can you give us just a synopsis on, on how you, that conversion's made? I mean, yeah. Before I do that, I want to get back to what you were saying before. So you were saying, you know, the stars are out there and how does it affect us uh, physically, right? Yeah. The thing is, and how can we, we're, we're not conditioned or, or stuck to that, to that star system or whatever. The thing is, is once we understand who we are, we're then no longer attached to the matrix. The matrix is the construct that's creating everything around us. Once we break apart from that, where we can understand that we are the energy vortex that is continuously flowing, we become like a, an eternal light, so to say, right? We're awake in the dream. It's that that point that you can then no longer be tied to the structure of the matrix. And but until then, we're going to have to experience that. Yeah. Now, are you now are you saying that? Uh, and I'm I'm just curious because uh, <clears throat> I had a, an experience in Sedona last year where I went through some stuff or whatever, and I walked out to a hill, walked up to a hill, and I shot up, you know, like I just got, became like a giant, but I kind of like beyond the stars. Like, I, in other words, I kind of saw it like an overlay. Are you saying that the, that the, the design of the stars, and, and, uh, and there's no right or wrong, I'm just trying to get an idea, is mm -hmm. it's like an overlay or part of the matrix? And once we realize who we are, then we can move beyond that? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yep, mm -hmm. pretty much because the, the stars are the construct that hold the vibrational frequencies in place. So if you look at a table, a table is vibrations, it's energy, right? So what is it that's holding all these things in our reality in place, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, if you look, if you look at science today, it's say, like, oh, it's gravity, it's the strong force. But no, it's, there's so much more than what we're being taught and told in our academic reality, right? That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's it's been um, skewed for quite some time now, 7,000 years. So a lot of the information that we have from our academia is not the absolute truth. There's so much more to us. Everything is a vibrational frequency and the stars, each one of them holds a specific vibrational frequency that holds the construct together. Yeah. So it's like they, they each hold uh, information. Uh, yeah. And, and as the sun passes in front of them, right? Because the, the star, yeah. the constellations are further than the sun. As the sun passes in front of them, the sun is a magnifier. It magnifies the vibrational frequencies of the light and sound into our reality. Wow. Yeah. So that's how that's how that's how the constellations work when we say we're moving into Gemini, we're moving into uh, Sagittarius, or the relationship between the um, aspects as we're moving in. Like if you look at astrologers, right? I mean, they can predict certain energies that are going to happen that that week based on the positioning and the aspects and the angles of certain relationships. Yeah. What we're talking about it's vibrational frequencies, right? So. Once we understand how these vibrational frequencies work, we can start using them every single day throughout our, our uh, existence. So, so getting into your second question was, how can we use this every single day? Well, when you look at like, say, hey, you know what I can do? I might do this. Can I share my screen or no? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Cool. Cool. Should be a green uh, icon. Yeah. yeah, I'm from uh, all over this space. Oh, you got a, you got a, Oh, there you go. All right. Do you see that? Can you see my, my mouse here? Yeah. So uh, this is your mouse. I don't see. All right. It's okay. So you, you see Aries there, right? So this is tropical astrology, right? So you have sidereal astrology, which is based on the constellations and the movements. And then you have tropical astrology. Tropical astrology really has to do with more uh, perfection in the Northern hemisphere of, of, of our, of our existence on this plane. But if you look at how the tropical astrology works, it comes in, they say every starts at 6 a.m. every single day. And then it also starts in March, March 21st, right? So that's the equinox. We have equal days, right? Then if you look at the autumn equinox, you go into Libra, which is 6 p.m., right? So this is the balancing point of our day. And then if you go into June, which is 12 p.m., you're moving into Cancer, right? So this is the highest point of, of the sun's position, which is the solstice, right? So it's the longest day. Then you go to 12 a.m., which is December 22nd, and it's associated with the shortest day. 
So if we look at our, just in a day's perspective, we're waking up around this time, we're moving into Taurus, the energy of Taurus. So every two hours, the sun moves 30 degrees. Mm. In that 30 degrees, we change the constellations as well. So we start off with Aries, which is a fiery energy, kind of waking us up, moving into Taurus, which is kind of a practical energy. Then we move into Gemini, kind of getting everything, communication, getting everything going. And then we move into our lunchtime, right? Around this time where we move into Cancer, it's about the home, kind of just resting a little bit. And then we get into the fire part of our day, which is Leo. And then Virgo, and then we get into Libra, which is balance. We're balancing work and home. We're kind of coming home, getting ready to rest. We go into Scorpio. Scorpio is go back on the internal. Then we move into Sagittarius, the seeker, right? And then what's interesting about Capricorn and Aquarius and Pisces, these are all like the dream states, right? The underworld kind of things. And you look at it, we're completely out cold at these points. So if you look at the hottest part of our day, right, in the Northern Hemisphere, it's 3 p.m. The coldest part is 3 a.m. The cold, the hottest part of our year is Leo, right? The dog days of summer, which is right here. The coldest part is Aquarius. So you can see kind of how the correlation of our days are a cyclical pattern of our months and years. All the same energies exist throughout our day, our months, and our years. It's it's so fascinating. And I break this down quite a bit in, in the course. Um, so, so there's like a macro micro element. Uh, of our whole entire existence, yes. Yeah, yeah it's, wow. it's, it's incredible. That's pretty that. fascinating. I've never seen that before. Yeah, I actually made this up. This uh, came to me. Um, the, the, I, the, I mean, I didn't make it up. Uh, I made this design up that I'm showing you. But uh, yeah, this design came to me about five years ago. And I just sat down and sort of making it out with, uh, with, uh, with that paint, that program paint. <laughs> it's a very yeah. basic program. But yeah, it was pretty cool. But it really, it really describes how everything that's happening every single day. So if you know the energies that are happening above us, what constellations above your head at that point in time, that vibrational frequency is there, which is uh, there for you to use, per se, rather than if you had a, a Sagittarian energy above you, uh, opposed to having a Taurus energy above you. They're different energies. If you know what the energy is, you can utilize that energy. You can pull it in because what we are is giant magnets. Our bodies are magnets, right? If you look at heart math and look at the heart, the heart is the biggest giant magnetic field in our bodies. And then if you look at the pineal gland, right? What's the pineal gland? Let's say a pine cone. If you look at magnetic fields in a pine cone, they're identical. A, a pine cone looks exactly like a magnetic field. So it's interesting. If you see the pineal gland, they call it the pine cone. It's because it's a magnetic field that's running through it all the time. And that's that's our that's our way to see into the higher realms because we, we are very limited in our sight, right? We can only see in this thing called the visible light spectrum, which is only 400 nanometers wide, right? It's 370 nanometers wide of the full entire spectrum. Now to put that in perspective, a sheet of paper is 100,000 nanometers. Now we can only see in 370 nanometers. So there's so much that we can't see because our, our pineal gland has been de uh, calcified and our, and our our DNA has been kind of uh, manipulated to so that we can have this experience. It's all been done on 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 purpose for us. Yeah. Have this experience. Yeah, and it's kind of and I know it's kind of trivial, but I just have a curiosity thing here. <laughs> so with everything that's laid out, you know, people talk about uh, the moon being AI. Mm -hmm. I personally think you know there's no such thing as AI because everything's made of the same God substance. That's just my opinion. But mm -hmm. in this design, like I said, we had this big meeting. We all came down here. Here's how we designed it. And then somebody came in and commandeered or hijacked the whole scenario and put up something like that. How does the moon, in your, in your, from your perspective, how does the moon affect it? And is it, now, con is it contrary to the original design? Um, I honestly can't answer that. I don't know. Uh, what I do know is how the moon works now on us and how it, how it, you know, how it pulls on our emotions. You know, some people say it's a soul trap um, so that you can't leave. And I know you, you can't leave this. Once you get into the matrix, like once you come into it, you have to take this 26,000 year cycle, which 26,000 years is the perception of the equinox. So say Sagittarius starts here. It takes 26,000 years for Sagittarius to make the whole entire 360 degree back to where it is. That's called the perception of the equinox or the great year. So once you get into this, into this expression of, of, of vibration, you have to take the, the plunge for the 26,000 years. Unless you can, like you're saying before, you can become a master within the matrix and then you're not bound by it. But I mean, we really, we came in here for the experience. We're really, yeah, the yeah. experience is amazing. 
it's it's incredible what we're here doing and and being. Absolutely. And and what does that and what does that mean? I mean, to to ma- to become a master within the matrix is is yes. is that. Uh, I mean, I know we use the word ascension, but is that uh, more like transcendence? Like in terms of like, uh, uh, well, who was it? Uh, Enoch? Was it Enoch that uh, yeah. just went straight yeah. to without yeah, having so to sort of... When we look at the expression of the universe, right? There's multiple verses. This universe is one verse in the multiverse. And this universe is based on the principles of vibration, which we look at as light, right? So we have light and dark, you know? But what it is, is it's a vibration. So this universe we're here to understand and experience and express vibration so that we become masters of vibrations so that when we leave here we're a master of vibration and we can take that into another universe and create with that experience of being a master of vibration right Right now in terms of your channeling now do you still uh now you got you went into hypnotherapy right uh yeah well i use i i use hypnotherapy as a tool like so like people have this this thing with hypnosis um, yeah, so hypno- hypnotherapy is just a tool to really access your higher self. And that's really what I'm all about. So my book, my first book was I Am, Understanding Whom, What You Are. Hypnosis gives me the tool to allow people to access their higher self extremely quickly. So if somebody wants to become a channel, I can help them do that very quickly. Yeah. Because it helps them whoosh, slip right through the cracks. <laughs> right now, through their higher. All right. And, and, now, and now, with everything that you're doing and all these years you put into it, uh, mm-hmm. how, how much of your direction... Uh, would you say uh, even content has come from your channeling or your connection to your higher self? Uh, and how much of it has come from Jason, the 3D human uh, hyperscope? The researcher? Yeah. <laughs> Jason, yeah. the researcher? Yep. Yeah. yeah, definitely. So it's interesting about my course. So my course uh, is, is um, actually it's eight weeks. I said seven. I apologize. It's eight weeks. The first four weeks are what Jason, the researcher, has found and put together to wow. explain what Jason the experiencer has found in the in the ethers. Wow. So I had these experiences um, throughout through my channeling years and then I would download information extremely quickly like all the information I received about the stars and how they work was an instantaneously that it was like it was just like I looked at the stars asked a question boom I had all this information is flooding me flooding me flooding me and then uh, I knew how the stars worked. But like, I, I couldn't explain that without explaining what people already know. You have to use what's familiar before you can get into the unfamiliar. Because if you jump into the unfamiliar, people are like, oh, you got, you're just crazy. But if you can connect the dots of using science, which people are very familiar with science and quantum physics and how that all works and then show the unfamiliar, they're, they're either they have a, a better understanding and they're easier to, to accept the ideas. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. I always find it interesting when I run into people like you. Uh, uh, so much of this, use the word uh, uh, Jason, the experience, the experiencer over the last mm-hmm. years, which in both is in your connection to uh, the higher aspects or the other aspects that you say. Uh, and then also as a human, uh, you know, yeah. people talk about, you know, you, you're very well versed. I mean, extremely well versed on the stars and the celestial bodies and the formations and all that. Uh, so you do, you must have some, uh, some degree of uh, uh, what's coming. But what do you do on a personal level when the energy hits you, when you get triggered? You know, uh, do you have a method that you use to come back to center and come back to balance? Or does it happen to you or not happen to you? No, it happens. It happens. Yeah, <laughs> it definitely. Does. No, I, meditation. Yeah. When something, when something hard comes in, like it's just like a boom, I have to go meditate. I have to like get centered because I can't, I can't let the mind run rapid because the mind, once you get into a loop, the mind will just keep on sucking in, sucking in that energy because remember our mind is, is a magnet. So once you grab on to a specific thought, it then magnetizes that thought and it brings more thoughts like it. Yeah. So once a situation happens and we attach an emotion to that, to that experience or that thought, it becomes an experience, then that becomes our reality and that starts flooding in. So then it's kind of like, Oh, I gotta, I gotta get back at centered and kind of, just so I can stop the thoughts coming in so I can see from a different angle, a different perspective. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people have talked about, of course, it got real big, what, uh, 20 years ago, with the secret, you know, the law of attraction. Yeah. Let me create a big mansion and a Rolls Royce yeah. and all that stuff. Uh, and I think we've moved beyond that. You know, I think there's, a, there's a, at least a, a small, powerful minority that's uh, gone into more of service, uh, 
how do we utilize this, uh, what our natural nature is to create and manifest uh, on behalf of the collective, you know, as we serve self, yeah. we serve the collective. Uh, how, you know, how does that fit in? Are we, are we in the motions of something that we might call predestined and all, all going to happen is the way it's supposed to happen? Or do we have some say so to create change in the moment, to expand uh, creation in the moment? Um, that's a very complex question. <laughs> yes and no is the answer. Um, no, our day is predetermined, right? So our day is predetermined. But like I said, once you awaken within yourself, you then have that ability to, to maneuver things around where you can basically instantaneously manifest. But I don't think we're, we're quite at the point yet. We're ready to understand how to get back to instantaneously manifesting because we have so much, um, I don't want to say trauma, but we have so much stuff inside of us that's blocking us from doing that right now. But all right, I'll just go deep, right? Can I go deep? Go yeah, deep here? absolutely. Go <laughs> as deep as you want. Let's, let's go deep. Okay. When we go to sleep, what's happening, right? So we think, oh, we're going to sleep, we're rejuvenating. But if you look at uh, like dimensions and how dimensions work, and yeah, even uh, keynotes in the piano and octaves, right? all dimensions and vibrational frequencies shift at 90 degree angles, right? So at a 90 degree angle, we shift into another reality, another dimension. Now, if you look at our awakened state, we walk around vertical, right? The shift comes when we go horizontal, which is a 90 degree angle, and we shift into a different phase, a different reality. What we're actually doing is we're opening up into our higher self. We're going back into our higher self. We're going back into who we truly are. So the reason why I call it the soul's dream, because what we're experiencing here and now, this is the dream. This isn't the reality, <clears throat> right? right? All this is the reality, but this is actually the, the dream. The, the the truth of who you and what you are is an infinite being, which is, yeah. you know, it's very hard to understand where we're right now. Soul. That's what we so, <laughs> yeah. So when we go to sleep at night, we're actually going back into our higher self. Yeah. Our higher self is then constructing our day yeah. for the experience for our growth. Right. So what we have these things called, you know, her contracts where we are going to meet certain people and stuff like that. These contracts are, are written up and created by our higher self and higher selves to have the experience that the soul is looking to accomplish or experience or express, however you want to say it. So when we go to sleep at night, we're actually creating our next day. So our whole entire day is created the next day, meaning it's predetermined. OK, so the next day is predetermined, but it doesn't mean the day after that is predetermined the day after that right. day after that. It actually changes every single right. day based on your vibrational frequency. Now, yes. the higher your vibrational frequency gets every single day, guess what's going to happen tomorrow? It's going to get higher and higher yeah. and higher and higher because you are then become a, a match vibration. You're resonating in that expression inside of that experience. So there, there's that one expression. If you want to change the world, you have to first change yourself. Once you start changing yourself, everything around you changes. You don't have to change anything outside of you, right? So if you look at a projector that's projecting an image, you don't want to change the image. You want to change what's inside the projector projecting. Inside of the projector is the higher self. So it's all that self-talk that we have about ourselves. Where do we get that from, right? We want to go in there and make sure whatever we're talking about ourselves and how we're visualizing ourselves is in the highest. Because once we start doing that and then we take it to our dream state, that helps manifest our next day to have the experience of what we want to experience. So say you're talking about the secret, you want to, you want to manifest something. The thing about uh, the secret was the law of attraction, right? But what if what you're trying to attract is trying to attract you? And it's, it's, in the, it's actually in the reverse, right? But you're holding back from receiving it. So you're getting the glimpses of what it is that you want because it wants you, but mm -hmm. yet you can't attract it because you have all this stuff going on, all these emotional blocks that are blocking you from getting that. Otherwise, oh. It's just free flowing because yeah. the infinite inside of the infinite, there's infinite possibilities. If you look at like multiple timelines, infinite timelines, right? Where there's multiple things happening at, at the same time, just on a different wavelength. The infinite is right outside of our fingertips. Yeah. And it's the magnet within our heart. That's the vibrational frequency that's becoming a match vibration to pull that experience from the infinite to the finite expression. So our experience is finite. You can measure it, right? We, we have laws, time, constructs. That's all finite. Inside of the infinite, none of that ex exists. Everything is a possibility. So what we're doing here is we're actually pulling those, those experiences to us by matching a vibrational frequency resonance. So when we think of something, a thought comes in, 
Then we attach emotion to it. And through that emotion becomes a feeling. And that feeling is a vibration that's a signature to the infinite to pull that experience to you. Yeah. Now, if the channel isn't clean, right? There's a lot of uh, stuff in the way. It's going to be a lot harder for you to get there. And stuff in the way means emotional blocks that you have picked up through lifetimes and yeah. through this life that are holding you back from doing that. Like a lot of people think, you know, money's the root of all evil. But they don't, they don't think that, but they were, they were told that. And yet that's a subconscious block inside the mind because the, money, the, the, the subconscious, the higher self doesn't know the difference in this reality from the infinite, right? So it says, right. oh, money's root of all evil. You don't want that, right? And even though you're saying, I want that, I want that, I want that. Um, so I don't know if you ever heard of uh, Marissa Pierce. She's yeah. a hypnotherapist. She is amazing. She's, she's incredible. But she helps people who can't get pregnant get pregnant. So all these, these girls have gone through all these in utero, it's whatever those things are called, to get pregnant and they can't get pregnant. She goes in there, removes the, the psychological blocks, and boom, they're getting pregnant. And the reason why they weren't getting pregnant was because when they were younger, they were saying to themselves, oh, I never want to have a baby with him, or I, I never want to have kids. And the subconscious mind goes, oh, you never want to have kids. I got that. I understand that. I understand it because repeat, 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 repeat becomes a habit. Once it's a habit, it runs in the program in the background. You no longer have to think about it. It's just running in the background. And then here you are 20, 15 years later trying to have a kid and you can't have a kid because in the background of your subconscious mind, it's still holding on to that emotional expression, that experience. This is, this is, this is deep. I like this. So, yeah. so I, have a, I have a question now because I, sure. I mean, I, I really like, I like anything that makes me think because if I have to think, then I know I'm expanding you know? <laughs> yes. now or at least potentially. Uh, yes. So on one hand, and I, and, I, and I was picturing this when you were doing it, I was just drawing it. I love what you said about we're on the vertical. And then mm -hmm. when we go to sleep, we go horizontal. Horizontal mm -hmm. is the higher self. The higher self plans the next day, mm -hmm. okay, figuratively and literally. Uh, yes. My first question was, and I got a second one. My first one was, I've always felt like free will is free will. Mm -hmm. and But that the free will really was exercised before we came into this, these incarnations into the 26,000 year cycle. Uh, does the higher self have free will? Yeah, that's a great, great question. That's like, that, that's the whole point right there. Yes, but free will isn't the external world. Free will is the internal world. So right. say I punch, I punch you in the arm, right? Do you react, which is instinct, or do you respond? Respond as being conscious, right? So if you respond, you're conscious, that's your free will to be in coherence with what's happening. When you react, it's just, it's an instinct like an animal. Boom. You're just reacting based on previous experiences, right? That's, so the free will comes into the point of how do you internally process? And that's mastery. Mm -hmm. So when something can happen out here and in here, you can remain centered the whole entire time. Mm -hmm. That's where free will is mastered, right? Otherwise, we're just moving on basic instincts of, of just reacting. But yeah. really... Free will is how we internally react and respond. Yeah. The external world, we can't change it. I was, if I punch you, you're already punched. Yeah. That was predetermined, right? You're all hot. We had a collective agreement for me to punch you today. That's going to happen now. How do you respond? And how you respond is how your higher self grows. Which so if is, you respond yeah. with a, an enlightening experience or answer to come back with, right? Like whatever it is, if you stayed center, your higher self goes, oh, okay. Lesson done. Move on to the next. You know, if it doesn't, if you go, oh, let's do this. Well, lesson not learned. We'll do it again. <laughs> yeah. So there's there's your higher vibrational frequency, and you wake up the next day, and it goes higher, and it goes higher, higher and higher and higher. And higher. That's it. You're, and it's, this, this is the best part, though. It's up to nobody but you, yeah. individually. From this point on, it's up to you, and each yeah. one of us can take control. But so many people today are looking at the news and looking at the propaganda and saying, we can't do anything. It has nothing. That's all baloney. That's that, all punch, that's that punch coming from the outside. Right? Yep. Go internal. It's yeah. all about you going inside yeah. of you and being yeah. centered all the time. Now, as, yeah, as, so, there's, so there's really almost like a micro, macro, paradoxical uh, free will uh, mm -hmm. who's in charge between the higher self and the human, which explains, yeah. I think, and I've said this a couple of times on the shows, a uh, conversation I had with my higher self couple of months ago and it was like you know you're learning from me you're learning from us the multi aspects or whatever but we're learning from you i'm learning from you and i thought oh wow that's that's uh that makes sense though that's and exactly you, how yeah and yeah. then you said uh okay so like the higher self kind of uh up there in the horizontal 
in the dream state, whatever you want to call it, meditative states, whatever we get there, is planning, is taking the information in, framing up the next day, right? And mm-hmm. then at the same time, we have this subconscious. And this is what you were talking about. So that because I'm trying to understand or expand here. So the so the subconscious is in well, in in some way, you say there's a link or it is the higher self. Uh, how do we gain the information from the subconscious? How do we gain uh, pure intel, truth, wisdom, whatever it right. may be, in our consciousness, uh, in, in our conscious state from the subconscious? Yeah, so our subconscious really is the link between the, the, our conscious reality and the unaware reality. So it's really the, the, the link between the two, but it, it's really the one that, that's running the show. So how do we get there? So here's something that's very interesting. From, they say if you take a child from the age of one to seven, you can teach them 10 different languages. You can teach them all this amazing things between the ages of one to seven. You know why, why that is? Because our brain waves, the frequencies of our brains are in theta and alpha. Mm-hmm. All right. So when our brains are in theta and alpha, we're able to absorb. It's kind of like our awareness and our subconscious awareness are kind of intermingling and we're just absorbing all that information. But then as we get older, we move into beta, right? Then once we get into beta, we kind of get into more of the frontal lobe where it's all about the experience, the the conscious experience where our imagination kind of goes to the back end of our our experience. We don't no longer think about our imagination too much. But when we're children, we're always in the imaginative state. Hypnosis, what it does is it puts you right into the alpha theta state. So say you want to stop smoking. You can't stop smoking because you have these conscious blocks inside of you that, you know, you have all these triggers that when you walk into a room, you go to eat your dinner. Oh, I got to have a cigarette now. That trigger's in there. So what hypnosis does is you go in there and you change the images. You change the image, you change the trigger points. And just like healing, healing is my favorite thing. Like doing the, the smoking stuff that really doesn't, whatever but healing is really amazing when you can go into somebody who had this this ailment for years and years and years and go in there and within three weeks that ailment's gone just by changing their belief structure by changing in their subconscious mind their reality shifts because a subconscious reality is it's more like a machine where our our conscious reality is the expression the experience of whom what we are but the the subconscious mind is really like a machine and the way we program the machine is through repetition Repeat, 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 repeat. How do you teach a kid? Repeat, 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 and the kid gets it, right? So even us today, if you want to get good at something, you have to practice, practice, practice. But as a kid, we learn much faster because we're in that vibrational frequency of yeah. alpha and beta. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen uh, studies on that where they talk about the number of things learned in a day at age two, at age three, at age four. Yeah, it's cool, it right? Starts, kind of starts to go down like at 18 or 20. I do and why? Think- it's the vibration. So the vibration is shifting. But what can you do personally to your, answer your question? What can we do personally every single day to get into alpha and theta? You don't need a hypnotherapist. All you need is meditation. Yeah. Meditation does the same exact thing. It slows the brain waves down and allows you to access those, those higher intentions, those higher thoughts where they, where they just fall into your lap, basically. So it's kind of like once you get centered, it happens for you. And a good way you can do it um, for anybody who's listening the eyes are the seat of the soul, right? So when you're talking to someone, you're looking into their eyes, it's the seat of their soul. You're actually looking directly into their soul, into their higher self. So what you can do is go, when you go into the bathroom and you have an affirmation, whatever it is that you want, want to experience, right? Um, I, I am healed, I am loved, whatever it is, stare yourself in the eyes. Yeah. And you're, you're directing that information, that conscious information directly into your subconscious mind. So that's a nice little practice that you can do daily to, to bring in what you want in this reality. I did that for years and people told me I was crazy. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I actually found it. <laughs> it's true. It's yeah, true. that's Anytime, great. This is driving down the road. I used to drive a lot on the road for my jobs. And, uh, spent a lot of time looking in the rear view mirror, looking at myself, uh, talking, <laughs> talking. Now, now yeah. uh, this is interesting. It really is. I uh, So now that, because I love to break things down to like layman's terms, like, yeah, like you know, a relatable, very relatable. Yeah. Uh, so it seems to me, or I'm going to ask the question, do you think that this conversion or transformation or transition or purpose, or whatever it is you want to call it, how you describe it, that we're going through is at least for us who are older, uh, making a transition from being in the state 
uh, and I don't remember what you said, the, the, the theta alpha, whatever, but being in the, or, or bringing it back, let's just say that a, a hypno session or a meditative session uh, is the micro. Uh, and now let's take it macro and say, this is Todd's whole life. Is, is what I'm trying to achieve to take myself back to those brainwave states when I was younger and make that last for extended period of times until it hits a point of perpetuity? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, and that's why daily meditation is so important because when you do something daily, the body, the human body, right? Like, remember, we have a human body. We're not a human body. We have a human body. So what you put in is what you get out. So when you're continuously going into those vibrational frequencies of meditation and slowing down those, those brain waves into alpha and theta, we move into that experience easier and easier and easier every yeah. single day. That's why you meet somebody who's been meditating all, all the time. They have this like this ease about them, right? You don't, you don't find someone who's been meditating every single day for years, high strung. It just doesn't really happen, you know, because their, their vibrational frequency is, is, at, is at that state of, of, yeah. of expression. But to bring it to the next level is how you tie in those, those states into your desires, right? And how you match your desires in those states into your subconscious mind. Because our subconscious mind is amazing. So is our conscious mind. I think we have a question that uh, segues perfectly in from what Perfect. you just said from our good friend, Neil Devaney, who puts up some fantastic stuff. I'd love for you to come on the show. <laughs> so I'm going to, uh, anyway, I'll go back there. Uh, he says, could you ask Jason, what is the connection between uh, brainwave states and heart-based consciousness? Um, well, when you look into uh, heart math, they call it coherence, right? So when you have coherence between your, your heart and your brain, then you have this, this centered connection, which how I would explain it is this vibrational frequency field of the magnetic field of your heart is then easy, has an easier ability to pull from the infinite into your experience. You're able to experience uh, your desires much easier. So yeah, there's definitely a connection. And then when you look, when you look at our brain, right, we have neurons. When you look at our heart, the heart has neurons in it. And yeah. interestingly enough, our gut has neurons in it. Yeah. So when you look at these three centers, right, so you have a center here, which has three chakra systems, right? You have your, your top three chakras, that have the heart, then you have your lower three chakras. So these three have their own neurological connection. The heart has its own neurological connection and the emotions have their own neurological connection, which is very interesting. So when you have these vibrations, vibrations in sync, right? And they're resonating together, we can then become a magnetic field to pull into our experience and, that, and then we get into instantaneous manifestation. But like I said, that's a ways away, but we can still use that today to start experiencing our desires faster yeah. and faster and faster. I, I think that was a great explanation. I'm just going to have to like uh, phase out that one, the one comment about uh, that's a ways away. <laughs> I just <laughs> let that compete in my head. Well, I, I, what no, I'm saying I, is ways away. Yeah, I, I, I think we're at least a millennia away, really, honestly, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. But it's exciting to be instantaneously manifesting, I'm talking about. When you, when you understand the whole matrix and the time of the matrix and it's all working, the time is all based on the, the construct of these stars around us. Uh, for the full awakening for humanity, we're nowhere near. Um, for a lot of people, the awakening is happening, but I don't think for the full. I could talk to you. I could talk to you about this stuff for ages, man. This oh, I, I can I can go on for ages. Like my like the stars are just a, a little tiny portion. Like we can get into the toroidal fields that are around us and how we can use those toroidal fields to pull in. There's so much that we can talk about, but let's so uh, <laughs> okay. Aside from the course, uh, and of course uh, you, uh, your beautiful wife, but uh, my beautiful wife, myself, and a few other people are going to be at that conscious conference, January 17th, 18th, and 19th, Sarasota, Florida. Uh, you can find that at wavesoflight.org. You've got this yeah. course, uh, the Soul Stream, and you got, uh, uh, where else can people find you? Do you do one-on-one -on -one sessions online? Anything I you'd do. like to, uh, yeah, anything you'd like to uh, tell uh, the people here on the live and on the replay and so would you proud? Uh, yep. any, you know, be it further commentary or whatever you'd like to do, channel, sing, dance. <laughs> yeah, so uh, jlayton.com is my, my hypnotherapy and spiritual coaching uh, website. That's my main gig. And then the Soul's Dream is where you can find the course. So it's the Soul's Dream. And that course is 100% free. Um, 
and then also the master's octave. So the soul's dream, the course is actually held inside of the master's octave. So yeah, this is, so you can, if somebody goes on to the site and they want to get a free consultation, I do a free 15 minute consultation to make sure that we're on the same wave path and then uh, get rocking and rolling. So yes, I mean, I like working with people who want healing. <laughs> I just love working with, with healings. I mean, it's, it's so amazing. Um, our friend Alexandria Winters is actually, she's on in the comments there. She had allergies for 25 years and she, she tried some, some crazy uh, things to try and get rid of these allergies. And um, I'm like, all right, let's, let's do a session together. Let's see what happens. Right. So we, we did two sessions and within three weeks, her allergies were, were gone. She was good. So it, it's, it's pretty amazing when you start going in and touching into what is blocking you, what's blocking you from moving. And it's so funny because it's, it comes from these crazy things that happen when we were children. And yet we're still running those programs in the background of our minds as if they're happening today, but they're, they're so long gone. So once you go in there, you pluck them out and replace them with what you want, your life changes completely. So, yeah. Right on. Yeah, it's very, it's very cool. So this is uh, the Master's Octave. Yeah, uh, this is the nonprofit. And this is where you can find... Uh... Yeah, so we have uh, Marina Jacoby. Um, we, had a, we did a course with her, and then the Soul's Dream. So the Master's Octave, we just uh, went... Um, not public, but <laughs> we just went into the world of the internet last year and we're working on building this up for a community of people who want to share information and put together courses. Wow. And because uh, we have, uh, I have a, I'm very talented when it comes to uh, technology. So uh, we have some amazing technology to help people really put a nice professional spin on, on their information. So if people have good information and they, and they want to uh, share it with the world. Uh, hit me up on the master's octave and we can collaborate and put something together and make this world a better world. There you go. So <laughs> jlayton.com. We got the master's octave. Um, sounds like he's uh, got an open invitation there for other collaborators, co-creators, as well as anyone that might be interested in a one-on-one -on -one session. This is the year of uh, expansion, sovereignty, co-creation, collaboration, and of course, reinforcing like you're doing. Uh, uh, through the uh, unknown, bringing in that 5D commerce, so to speak, of a equal <laughs> universal energy exchange. So you guys yeah. get out there, support uh, the brother. And uh, I look forward to meeting you and your wife and uh, collaborating yeah, we're, with we're gonna have, you. We're going to have a great time. We're going to have a great, great time. And guys, join us. It's, it's an amazing event. It's, it's going to be great. We're on a resort in Florida, two heated pools, beautiful place. That's where Beautiful we're going to be doing all the work, isn't it? I know, right? Right from the pool. Yeah, yeah. Okay. My workshop will be based on water and how our bodies are made up of 80% water. So we're going to change the molecular structure of the water in the pool so that it changes our vibrations in our bodies. That sounds cool, right? What do you think? Okay, I just I made like that up. That. <laughs> hey, I was going to say, that's a spontaneous, intuitive, creative imagination. A little bit courageous to put yourself out there. I've been able to, I've been uh, known to do that a few times. It doesn't always work out, but... <laughs> yeah, that, that takes that takes big cojones. It's not. It was, uh, yeah. it was great spending time with you. I look forward to collaborating with you online and uh, yeah. you know in person in, in the future on, on more and more occasions. Definitely. Yeah, you take, top, thank you, you. you take care and thanks again for honoring us with your presence and uh, sharing space with us. Much love, much love, brother. All right, man. Peace out. Thanks Bye. a lot. Thank you.